I want to talk about the stabby part of the 16th and 17th century pike as it was used in the Netherlands uh, during the ADS war. The diamond shaped pike point is uh, these days often referred to as the Dutch style, which is probably because of uh, the famous images by Jacob de Gein. But I've also seen uh, similar shaped pike points with uh, Spanish and Italian soldiers. And I've even found similar pipe points uh, in the armory book of Maximilian I uh, from 1502. On the image, we see bundles of pike shafts and a pile of what could be different styles of pipe points. And we also see barrels with likely containing pikes for pipe points for storage. These pipe points almost always have a very strong midrib. Uh, which gives uh, the very end of the point uh, a square cross section, which makes the point far less likely to bend or break on impact. Sometimes you come across the term drilling, which translated to English means triplets. Uh, some historians believe that this either refers to uh, the three corners, one on the top, two on the sides, uh, or the fact that, mo that a lot of these spike points are three fingers wide. But this, of course, is spig glass. Some say that all the edges would have been sharpened so that the pipe point would cut on its way in and its way out. Some historians think that the diamond shaped pipe point uh, evolved from an earlier style that's sometimes called the frog mouth. It's similar to, uh, to the diamond shape, only it's a bit more, uh, more compressed of a diamond shape. But apart from the diamond shape, uh, we also see leaf shapes. But we also see points that are more typical, like typical spearhead, sometimes uh, with perforations in the blade. And we also see uh, triangular or uh, square cross section spike like points. In some historical depictions, we sometimes see different types of pipe points depicted alongside each other. The general consensus is that pipe points could vary, uh, vary, vary in style depending on uh, the particular order or maker, and all the pipe points were probably used until they actually had to be replaced. Now that I've shared a few of the different styles of pipe points, I wanted to share a few more points about the pike. A big difference between uh, pipe points and normal spearheads is that pipe points always had a langet. Some say that uh, the langets were to prevent uh, the pipe points from being cut off by swords or halberds or anything else. But I personally suspect that uh, langets are mostly there to brace the shaft of the pike because the shaft of the pike uh, thins towards, uh, towards the pipe point, so the wood would weaken uh, near the end, since the langets dissipate the force of the point uh, over a large area. And the langets are often between 10 and 55 centimeters. In the Germanic countries, most historical surviving pikes uh, are between 3.85 meters and 5.15 uh, meters, with the examples above 5 meters being rare. Over a year ago, uh, we had the pleasure of visiting the Dutch Military Museum uh, and, being, and being able to measure one of the pikes uh, they had in the collection. These are the measurements of that pike. Some pikes uh, had metal caps on the bottom of, uh, of the pike shaft. Sometimes you see depictions of soldiers on the march um, with a pike on their shoulder with some sort of material uh, on the pike shaft. Uh, I have no idea what this material uh, was or could have been. Uh, we mostly see this in the 16th century and not anymore in the 17th century. And it was, it was probably done to add a little bit more uh, comfort while carrying the pike on the march. Many pikes seem to have uh, some material or a ribbon uh, tied near the point of the pike. I don't know why this was done, uh, but it seems to have been done a lot according to the historical images. Uh, and I've found no sources that uh, uh, say anything about uh, this material. Um, so if anyone knows, please leave it in the comments. And if you like this video, uh, please leave a like or share it. And we'll see you in the next video.